Yo guys, as you know, I'm an almost SSL Rocket League coach, and at the time I'm recording this, I am just shy of having coached 1,000 players in Rocket League. So today, to celebrate, I wanted to release the best highlights from some of the coaching sessions I've delivered in my private coaching program over the last six weeks. So whether you're a plat watching right now or you're already GC, I guarantee the situations and the strategies I talk about in this video are ones you're sure to see more of in your games. <laughs> Also, if when you're done watching this, you want to learn more about Rocket League's number one private coaching program, you can skip the line by DMing me directly on Discord with the keyword skip to learn how to join the largest season yet, Season X. But for now, enjoy the coaching highlights, and I'll catch you all at the very end of the video to recap my top takeaways for what's working in the meta right now. I'll catch you soon. So it's gonna start off, you're gonna cheat. Ball comes up, bounces around here. I like to see you take boost and turn. Ah, so I'd like to see you turn back a little quicker. Do you see why this is pushing up a little too far? Yeah, yeah, they could immediately shoot that. A good player will put this just straight in the net. It's tempting to go for side boost, which you totally can do, but immediately after it goes here, you need to flip straight into side boost. This is a replay glitch. It's, it's not here, but I mean, it is here, but it's showing like it's not. You need to go straight for it insta turn back you can't turn forward turning forward is a huge mistake what yeah. you should do here just like in the future when you see me come around this way boom instantly the only play i have is i'm either cutting this way or i'm faking you and going straight so you should approach this challenge you see me wrap around like this you should approach this challenge like this but instead i think you approach this challenge like a little too straightforward let's mm -hmm. see yeah, and then you and you turn way too soon. And this allows me to play the ball to the right, and you can't get this read before me, so I just have a free... Now, all of a sudden, I've just closed a ton of space just by making yeah, a touch a off the net. ball. Yeah. yeah, that's basically a free net. Dang, I didn't even think about that. And you can't and defend. Um, and overall, I really like your movement. Honestly, like, your, your, your movement is really good here. You turn back, and here you're just a little bit wide after the catch. So here what I would do is immediately after this happens, I would flip forward here, so that way you close this gap. Because he's turned back, he's not gonna have time to turn on this ball. You have time to do a speed flip forward and, and push this ball to make him think you're going, and then you can regain control. Not speed flipping forward here allows him to turn, and I think you could have scared him away with a speed flip and win that ball. Very, very quick reaction. Might have saved you a second there. And then here you just kind of get beat on a cut. This is really tough. Yeah, once you're here, you just drive forward too long. That's it. And, a, yeah. and a good player will make this exact touch on you. One controlled touch, one powerful touch. You can't can't stop that. What do you think was the problem? Not, not during this pass, but right here. Oh, uh, yeah, flipped. You cannot flip when the ball is this close to to potential players, right? Do you know why that is? Yeah, I can't change direction at all. I'm fully committed to that direction. Absolutely. Because turns out what happens if this guy whiffs and then you can cut in and then beat him and then get an open net? You know, you wouldn't know because you're flipping. Uh, what do I not like about this rotation? What do you think? Uh, I, I don't think it was wide enough. Let me give you a hint. Oh, I could have uh, bumped or demoed. 100%. As you rotate back here, this guy is dead meat. He should be dead nine out of 10 times. But because you're flipping and you're just looking at the ball right now, you drive right past him without bumping him. And now he's gonna contest me in the corner. See this? Whereas I should have a breakaway here and it's not it's not so free because of that. So you make this touch up. What do you think I'm gonna say? Yeah, fl either flick earlier or like drop it down for a low challenge. So yeah. You're already coming. Yeah, second one, second one, second one, ding, ding, ding. You don't want to be under the ball on your half of the field. Yeah, because that it, and that invites getting dumped. Right, because I'm like, I, so I, I see the ball, I'm like, oh, okay, free, early challenge. If you would have kept this low, I, I would have maybe fake challenged because it's super risky for me to challenge from the side when you're coming like here, because where's the ball yeah. going to go if we go like this? It's going to go, yeah. Bang, bang, go into, the into the my wall. net. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes so much sense, actually. I get why you don't pick it up when you're shadowing. Like here, yeah, it's it's comp like the ball's going at the net. You're just like, oh shit, I just need to get back, right? So fine. 
but this there's no excuse for you not picking up boost here when this ball is just sent downfield and all you have to do is rotate upfield to catch up with the play right no pressure no pressure at all this needs yes. to be like a zigzag boom boom you pick up these right based on where the ball's going like if the ball goes way across the field then you can pivot across to here if the ball just comes back center then you go here and if the ball if they redirect it back into the corner then you go here right but this will never work you see yeah so here is yeah. a really good teaching moment so this is an awkward situation because you're waiting for your teammate to get back and you're like thinking you should challenge and you're like should i challenge should i not challenge like what's my goal here let me ask you what do you think is best case scenario here and i'm gonna say you're not allowed to count dunking him and scoring a goal that's not it that doesn't count like because <laughs> that's that, that, that would just be luck <laughs> diving for it best case is the just get some touch on the ball right and then you know we can maybe get possession but i think where you're going is probably just drive challenge and then turn away yes exactly drive that's challenge away. yeah because here, here's the problem if this guy you see this guy in the back there not not the guy with the ball but the guy in the back yeah yeah if that guy was in line with his teammate instead of being you know parked back on his uh back corner then this challenge is good but because he's here a challenge here will literally never lead to a goal it just won't so you're yeah mm -hmm. you're exactly right grab challenge get behind your teammate your teammate takes it you go back there the other benefit is when you go for a power side cut or a shot versus a carry what happens after the play the recovery is yes. faster yes yeah. yes 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 because you see you go for a flick you fail oh shit it's a one-on-one -on -one. hypothetically mm -hmm. you know it could be a one technically it's a 2v1 here luckily i'm gonna be first to the ball but like that's not a situation you want to put your teammate in right flicks against two defenders is usually a bad idea and just so the mechanical execution like was fine like wasn't ideal but even so that's not the play i want you to go for you know what i'm saying yeah yeah it's annoying that i'm getting boost here oh you should have taken my boost you could have had me here after this the problem is i have to play ball so like if you just dive after boost here this is a replay glitch by the way um this is actually here yeah. Uh, if I have to play ball because it's on my side of the field, but you turn back, you could have controlled this pad. And then if you take this pad, it doesn't matter if I get ball and try to turn it up field. I'm turning up field with what? 20? Five. Like if you if you just take that boost from me, this whole attack is failed. And I should have scored on you there. But like a better player scores this ball every time. Boost management. Because I, I think oh, that. that was... Yeah, it's just like turn back. Like and what and you have to understand like what's even the point of hitting this ball. Like, let's say you do beat him here, right? You have 16 boost. So potentially you beat him here. You like hit it off the wall, right? Like that's best case, right? Like it bounces off the wall. Okay, it bounces off the wall and it recenters. You have zero boost, so you're out of the play. He's full sent, so he's out of the play. So I'm left in a defensive one-on-one. -on -one. Like that's not good. <laughs> so never should a challenge even be up for grabs here. The minute he jumps, it's like, great. They just sold their attack. They literally have a 2v1 on you and he's about to boom it into our corner. So you should just go back, take boost, turn around, free ball. But instead this jump is literally the only thing that makes a touch like this even remotely good. But you're actually like making their lives a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can just tell you're just not com comfortable with like power side cuts. So like rule one of power side cuts, you there are two things you can do here. You can one, set up a power side cut, or you could two, go for a ground to air dribble. I think ground to air dribble is a little bit better because this is a one-on-one. -on -one. So you can just chip this ball up and go for ground to air. Or you can play it to the right and then swoop around for a power side cut. But playing it forward makes your attack completely two-dimensional. You can only hit it up or you can hit it forwards. There's no, yeah. there's no lateral movement possible here. So it's just something to work on. Always, your first touch should always be on an angle, unless you're going for a ground to air dribble.
Okay, so bringing it back, let's talk most common problems I saw over the last six weeks across, you know, Platt, Diamond, and Champ that we saw in the video. Number one, flipping across the field when the ball is unpredictable. Knowing when to use a flip to move around the field is actually one of the hardest things to master, even though it sounds like it should be easy. But the main actionable thing that you can start doing after watching this is make sure you're only flipping when you're covering large distances. If you're just tracking the ball side to side or trying to shadow somebody, flipping can be very risky because it's going to lock your car up, commit you to a line, and it makes it very hard for you to react quickly. Number two, making your first touch in a straight line at the opponent. I see this a lot when lower ranked players are attacking and it just makes attacking hard. If every time you get the ball, you hit it in a directly straight line at your opponent or down the middle of the field towards the center of the net, what's going to happen is you won't have any attacking angles. This is gonna make it easier for an opponent to challenge you and harder for you to outplay them, whether it's putting the ball over them, putting it left or right, whatever it may be. Really focus on soft, controlled first touches that give you good visibility and room to cut the ball around, make some outplays. Number three, going for carries in dangerous positions or really just when you shouldn't be. So many lower ranked players go for carries and then trying to flick it every single time. Flicks and dribbles are great, but you gotta understand that one, they're only really good for beating one opponent. Like if there are two defenders back, a flick is rarely gonna beat both of them. But number two, they're risky because if you don't have great control and it takes you some time to get it set up, you're at risk of getting dunked right at the start of the dribble. So carries are absolutely great and they should be a tool, but if you're getting pressured, going for a carry doesn't always make the most sense. Going forward, if you do have space, try to look for situations where you can opt for bounce dribbles instead of carries. Finally, rotating and collecting boost. Now, once again, this is one of the hardest things to work on, but when you're moving around the field, if you're not doing anything, you should really look for two things to do. Either A, collect boost, or B, look for demos. You gotta understand there's always some way you could contribute. So if you're just driving around the field, watching the ball, make sure you're at least being productive, you know, picking up boost or disrupting the opponents. That way you can have as much impact as possible in your games. All right, that was a lot. Hopefully I didn't throw too much information at you even if you just pick one of those things and implement it in your games i promise you're going to see very very quick results if you're looking for more stuff to train i just dropped my top 10 favorite aerial training packs over in my private discord so hit me up with the keyword send on discord if you want access to this top 10 list as well as a ton of other free training resources link to my discord is in the description below otherwise thank you all so much for watching i'll see you all in the next one peace guys Thank you